Good morning, ladies and gents. Today is a good day. Yes, indeed it is, because DaVinci Resolve 20 is live. The full release is here and it's available to download right now. So if you've been putting off from jumping on the beta, the beta, the beta, whatever you want to call it, you can now jump on DaVinci Resolve 20, get all of the new DaVinci Resolve 20 goodness, because it is live. Ha <laughs> ha. It's warm in here. You can either open up your currently installed version of DaVinci Resolve just like this, click on DaVinci Resolve, check for updates. This little pop-up will appear and then you can simply hit download. I haven't even installed it yet, so I need to do that. But while that's going, alternatively, you can just go to the blackmagicdesign.com website and because this is live, it will appear on the home screen and you can download it from there. If you want to download a version of Studio directly from Blackmagic without having to put all your details in once again, go to blackmagicdesign.com forward slash support. In the latest downloads, you'll see DaVinci Resolve 20, that's the free version. DaVinci Resolve Studio 20, that's the paid version. If I wanted to download the Windows version, I'd give Windows a click. This little box would appear. It asks for all of your details. You can actually ignore all of that and simply click download only in the bottom left hand corner. And good news for you iPad users. Jump onto the App Store. DaVinci Resolve 20 is there ready and waiting. Now, if you're worried about having issues, then you can do a backup before you install. So open up Resolve till you see your project library screen like this. Open up your projects top left hand corner with this little icon. You'll see your local databases, or now as they're called, libraries. Click on the little I, and then go to Backup. Choose a location for this backup. I'm just going to dump this on my desktop because I'm lazy for this demo. Hit Save, Backup, and that'll do a backup of all of your projects. Now, Resolve 20 doesn't actually upgrade the library, so even if you wanted to revert back to 19, you could just uninstall, reinstall 19, and you'd be good to go. What this new 20 version does do, though, is upgrade your projects. So if I was to try and open a project which was made in 19, it will say, do you want to upgrade the project version? This was made in an older version and you need to be on 20, yada, yada, yada. And then you hit upgrade. If you upgrade that project, it won't then be available if you downgrade to 19. But that's why we did the backup of the library itself. But to be super careful, what I would do is make a quick copy of this particular project just by clicking it, control C, control V to paste. Now we've got a copy. Then I could open this version because it's pasted it. It's now on 20. This version's on 20. The old version's still on 19. Right, all of that out the way, let's talk about it. Here are my five favorite features of DaVinci Resolve 20 because I've been using the beta version since it came out for all of my daily work. I've been messing around with it. Half of these aren't big features. They're the small differences, the small little features that I've noticed massive improvements to my workflow by using them every single day. And we're going to start off with the UI, more specifically, the vertical UI, because I've been doing some short form content. I've been in TikToks and Reels and stuff. I know I'm 36 and I've just got on TikTok. <sighs> what? What have I become? Y'all need to grow up. I know. <laughs> I agree, Mr. Fly. But this vertical portrait UI change is very, very useful. So let me give you a quick tour. Now we can actually make vertical videos easier now because there is this little drop down right in the top right hand corner of your preview screen. And you can simply change this timeline to portrait. And now we have a portrait video. Now this is nicer already, to be honest. We can have a media pool, uh, effects library in the middle. This was improved because originally you couldn't have both of them open. And then we've got an almost full width timeline down the bottom here. Now, underneath the preview window, there is this new icon. This will expand the view, and this will give us a full screen vertical preview. And it's just much nicer. We can come through, we can actually look and get a much better idea of how this is actually going to look. Now, this pulls over to the cut page, which has the same thing, vertical viewer, and on the color page. Now, on the color page, it takes a little bit of getting used to because our nodes are now over here, where we're used to them being over here kind of swaps things around, but that at least keeps it consistent with the edit page and the cut page. So it kind of makes sense. And it's just a nice addition. If you don't do portrait videos, vertical videos, you probably won't care about that one, but it is a really nice welcome change. Next up, the keyframe editor. 
Again, this is something I've been doing more of because I've been doing these vertical videos. The keyframe editor, the previous version in 19, was a bit meh. It was all squished, it was difficult to use. This new one is much improved. Now it's not perfect, so there is something which I've seen lots of people complaining about online, which we'll jump to in a second. But first, let me show you the positives. Let me show you how I've been using it and why I really like it. So we've got some screen capture and we need to keyframe it. So I've opened up my keyframes by clicking on this new icon here, keyframes, and we get this keyframe window. Now, I'll be honest, I've barely used this. All I've been doing is jumping straight over to the keyframe curves instead, because this to me is far more useful. We click our parameters, go to video, it will show you all the things that you can kind of keyframe. We're gonna untick everything. I just need position X, because I'm just doing left and right, and here we are, ready to go. Now, there's been a few new additions. The first one is been able to do handles, so you can actually add keyframes past the point of the clip starts and ends on the timeline. So if you want it to start ramping up before the point, you can, which is a really big thing. It just makes things much, much better. Now, another new addition is this icon here, which is a flat handle mode, which I recommend that you tick that. I'll show you what that does in a second as well. And then all I need to start doing to add my keyframes, I hold Alt or Option, and then I can click, and we've added a keyframe, can scrub through, hold Alt, click once again to add another keyframe, and then I can drag this up. Now, a slight issue I've been having is you can't amend this vertical scaling manually. So I'm going up the tiniest amounts, and obviously with the X position, this needs to be much more. So I'm gonna double click, put in something like 100, and then my scaling increases, then I've got a better idea of what I'm actually doing. We can just play through, and I'll add my keyframes as I go, something like this. Now, if we make sure our line is clicked, we can see our keyframes down here, so I can just click and drag to mess around with the timing, which is really handy to be able to fine tune it without messing anything up. And then if I hold Alt and click on the keyframes once again, it will automatically give us some curves. So because we've got this flat handle mode on, it won't mess anything up. So all of this is gonna give us a nice little S curve. The position will remain a nice straight line and then give us another S curve here. If I want to amend the curve, I can. If I give this keyframe a single click, if I start messing with these, you can mess both of them up. But if you hold Shift and then click on this one, you can just drag it without messing any of the other side up. And there you go. Also, if I click this keyframe, then hold Shift and make my first movements up and down, I can move this up and down without messing the left and right. If I click this once, hold Shift, move it left and right first of all, I then can't affect the up and down. So it's just really nice to be able to go through the timeline, kind of in real time. I can see everything down here. I can see my preview. I can just add keyframes, alt and clicking as I go, drag this up, alt click again to add some different curves, blah, 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 mess around with that. It's really good, and that's how I've been using it. So personally, yeah, I just think it's a better solution, but let me know your thoughts down below. I know some people don't like the way that the retime curves, the speed ramps are done because that's also using this keyframe editor. Again, I don't really see a problem with it, but I don't spend a huge amount of time doing speed ramps. I'd like to because I'd like to make a video all about those. So again, let me know your feelings down below. Now, the other common complaint is the fact that you cannot keyframe or curve any fusion based effects or titles on the edit page in this new keyframe editor. What I mean by that is if I was to go to the effects library, grab anything from this effects area, or pretty much any of the titles from within titles, all of these fusion titles, and a text plus and whatever else, do some keyframing on this, open up the keyframes, click on these three little dots, have a look. The option to keyframe that size in that fusion title doesn't appear within this list, so we cannot do it. Now, just for clarity, this does work with open effects. So if I grab this zoom blur, put this on there, open up the keyframes, three little dots, display selected keyframes, we now have the option for the zoom blur, we can toggle that on. Once that's on, I can go to my curves, parameters, zoom blur, and I can see my keyframes on there and curve them. Now this is a weird one, I kind of agree it would be really handy to be able to do that, but I don't think, if memory serves me right, you could do that in 19 on the old keyframe editor. 
so it's technically not any worse than it was before. I think it feels worse because this keyframe editor is actually really quite good now, so it's annoying to have to jump over to the Fusion page to do separate curves and whatever else. Previously, it didn't feel quite so annoying because the keyframe editor on the edit page wasn't great, so you kind of didn't mind jumping over to Fusion to use the better one to do your curves. But now, obviously, we'd much rather be able to do it all in this new keyframe editor. But I have a theory. Now, this is purely a guess. I think they're going to redo all of the keyframes and the splines on the Fusion page to match this new keyframe editor. So everything is using the same method. And when they do that, you have one keyframe editor basically to do all of the keyframes within the entire DaVinci Resolve. It feels fragmented at the moment. I think that will be fixed and eventually we'll get one keyframe editor to rule them all. I'm guessing. If that's not the case, Blackmagic, may, may, maybe do that. Because <laughs> I think that would be quite good. But I'm just a random idiot on the internet, so, you know, don't listen to me. Again, thoughts. Let me know your feelings. Anyway, on to the next one. Next up, number three, the AI Music Editor. This allows you to change the length of songs and it will automatically cut it up and make everything match. And it's really good. It's really handy. Now, this is only available within the studio version, which is the paid for version, but I love it. It just saves me loads of time. So I've got this music track. And as you can see, it's way too long. So we're going to give it a click, open up the inspector, come down to the AI music editor and then hit adjust, which you only need to do once. That's simply going to kind of look at the track and then figure out where cuts might need to be, kind of load it into the AI brain, I guess. I don't know, something like that. And then you can take this live trim and then we simply just trim it to the length we want on the timeline and it will make the cuts and make the song the length we need it to be. Make it a bit longer, make it a bit shorter, do all the things you need. And it does a really, really good job. It will give you different versions, so the cuts in different places, so you can have a little listen, see which version you prefer. And when you're happy with it, untick this live trim, and then you can make any manual trims if you want to, and it will act like a regular sort of length track. Tick that again to retime it once again. And then if you're super happy, you want to lock it in, you can right click, decompose in place using the clips only, and then you'll get the actual sort of music tracks back with that cut in place and you can do what you want with it. Super simple, super clever, something people wanted for a long time because I know it was available in Premiere Pro. Now it's on the edit page and the cut page within DaVinci Resolve. Gets a thumbs up from me. Now AI isn't just super useful at retiming music, it's also super useful for finding music. Introducing Hands AI by this video's sponsor, Audio. With Hands AI, you can simply describe the video, the scene, or the vibe, and it will search the entire audio music catalog to find the perfect music for your video, saving you a ton of time. Once you've found one that you like, open it up and you'll get a bunch of other songs just like it so you can pick and choose your favorites from there. You can get access to Hands AI plus the entire music and sound effects catalogs from Audio with the Audio Pro license which you can get for just $59 for your first year using the code ALEX70. So head over to audio.com forward slash Alex. There's a link down in the description below. Then just use your code ALEX70 at checkout to get your 70% off and your first year of Audio Pro for just $59. Right, DaVinci Resolve 20, let's crack on. Next up, number four. This one's incredibly simple. I kind of briefly mentioned it in my original release video, but I missed a key thing about it. I was kind of looking at the wrong thing, but it is the humble copy and paste, or more specifically, copy and paste attributes. So this clip here, it's got some transforms on it. We've got a zoom blur open effects and I've color graded it really well, as you can see. Let's just move this out of the way a little bit. If we do a control C on this one to copy, and then click this one over here on the timeline. We'll do an Alt or Option and V to paste attributes. It ticks the boxes of the things that you've done. And that, that's all it is, but it makes life way easier. So previously, you'd, look, you'd see something like this, and then you'd have to remember, I want to untick everything, and then I only want the cropping and the color correction and the effects or whatever. Now, as soon as you hit that paste, 
it will automatically tick the things which have been amended. So no zoom at the moment because I didn't do a zoom on this one. Do a little bit of a zoom, copy, paste. Now the zoom is ticked. Boom, little time saver that makes a big difference. Last up, number five. This is mainly because I've been working on a video all about it, which is due to release very, very soon. It's a studio only effect once again. Magic Masks. The new Magic Masks, Magic Mask 2, in DaVinci Resolve Studio 20 is really, really good. That's the review. It's really good. It's slower. They are definitely slower. They're slower to click, slower to pick your subjects, and slower to track than the previous versions. But damn, they are good. So I've got a couple of quick examples ready to go. Check out this guy, riding his bike, goes behind trees, goes behind a big rock in a second. You can't see him for quite a while. So all we're gonna do, magic mask, give him a click, make sure I've got my overlay turned on, give him another click, give him another click, just to pick all the different points of him and the bike. There we go. And then we're gonna track this through and it's just gonna lock on and not let go. Even behind all those trees, behind the big rock, it's got him all the way to the end. It's magic. Now I was tracking at about 25 frames per second there. I'm running on a new NVIDIA 5070 Ti GPU. Thanks to NVIDIA and Scan for sending this out. Not a sponsored video, just letting you know. And it's running well. But if I run the old legacy version, that clip runs at about 60 or 70 FPS. So this new one is slower, but it is way more accurate. Just to give you another quick example, We've got this girl here running through mixed lighting, her hair's jumping around. It would be a horrible thing to try and track. So magic mask, better. Give her a click so her hair's picked up. Give her a click so her body's picked up. It's done the rest. We will track this through. And again, this is all in real time. I'm not gonna make any cuts for you so you can see how this is doing. It's tracking nicely. I'm not gonna have to amend this at all. I wouldn't have thought. And it's done, and it's done a really good track. As we play through, we can see all of this is highlighted. Let's make it a bit more obvious. It's picking up the hair strands. It's going through the dark bits. And the light, still doing a really good job. It's just doing a really good job. And while making my big main video, I discovered something that Magic Mask can do that I had no idea it could do. So I'm gonna do a separate video all about that as well. So there you go. This was a slightly long waffly video, but they are my five favorite features so far within DaVinci Resolve 20. There's loads of stuff. There's loads of AI voice cloning, copy and pasting EQs now. There's magical scripto features. There's IntelliScript features. There's Loads of really cool stuff, and I'm going to make videos on every single one. We're going to do dedicated videos about all of the cool stuff within 20. Now that it's live, I can get cracking on those. So let me know down in the comments what your favorite features are and what sort of videos you'd like to see from me. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Get downloaded and have some fun. I'll see you next time.